If you have your Bibles this evening, I invite your attention to the book of Philippians chapter number 1. Philippians chapter number 1 and verse number 6. God's good work tonight. The Apostle Paul, as he wrote to the church at Philippi, verse 3, he thanked God upon his remembrances of that church, making requests with joy. He could pray for this church with joy. Sometimes, sometimes pastors and preachers can't do that about their church. They cannot pray for their church in joy. Because their church is in such turmoil. But the Apostle Paul called the church at Philippi. Praying for their fellowship in the gospel. The partnering in his ministry. Do you know and understand that it was the church at Philippi, the only church that Paul started, that helped the Apostle Paul financially. And there were a lot richer churches and a lot richer cities than Philippi, the great city of Corinth, the great city of Ephesus. And yet only Philippi helped the Apostle Paul in a financial way in his ministry. A testament to the faithfulness of this church and the generosity of this church in its giving when they couldn't really afford to. And then in verse number 6, we find there the Apostle Paul is moved by the Holy Spirit of God, said to the Philippian church, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The Philippian church could be confident that God had started a good work in them. And God has done the same for us in our life, in our church. God has started a very good work. But have you ever started something that you never finished? How many things have you ever started in your life that you never finished? Yes. You may have to take off your shoes and start counting with your toes, get out your abacus, and probably a lot of things. And although it might have been a good idea at the time, something to get started, it might have been ill-planned. It might have been ill-backed. It might have gotten boring and became just abandoned. Sometimes they just fall apart. I tried that once, trying to start a church. That work never got finished either. It's unfortunate, but true. Well, we can be confident in our life that when God starts something, he will finish it. That's what the promise that he gave in verse number 6 to the church at Philippi. They could be confident of this very thing, that he, speaking of God, that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day, complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God has begun a work in us, as I mentioned. It's a work that only God can, can perform. God's work that he has started in us is a work of grace. The work that he has started in this church over 62 years ago is a work of grace. God's grace to save us. God's grace for us to live by. 
See, many people think that God's grace is only for saving. God's grace is for much more than that. God's grace is a grace you can live by. God's grace is a grace you can give by. In fact, Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9 talks about the concept of giving by grace. Using the churches of Macedonia and Achaia. What church was that? Do you know? It's the church of Philippi. Philippi located in Macedonia. If you go back to the call in Acts chapter 16, Paul saw a vision of a man from Macedonia who said, Come and help us. And the first city he went to there in Macedonia was the city of Philippi. To begin the church of Philippi. So Paul, using the example of the Philippian church to encourage the church at Corinth to give by grace. And if you study that, we should be doing that too. Not only our tithes and offerings, our times, our talents, and our abilities. I was amazed. I was really amazed. Even though it took me eight years to get my bachelor's degree. Many people get doctorates by that time, but, you know, I, I just got a bachelor's degree. And even though it took me eight years to do that, and my life only revolved around school, work, and church, and my church activities, and even though I invested my time to be able to worship the Lord and to be able to be involved in visitation and be involved in my church. I was amazed at how much time I had to do things like my homework, to work, and to take care of other things. You give your time to the Lord, somehow God stretches it to make that 24 hours seem to last a bit longer or you get more done in that 24 hours than you ever thought you could the grace to be able to serve god the grace to be able to suffer for god the grace to be able to sacrifice and to speak for god and to sing praises to god and the grace to strengthen us to grace is a lot more than just saving grace And as God's work of grace saves souls and establishes churches changes families communities and even countries. The work of God's grace. And the work of God's grace is a good work. This work that God has started is, that good, is a good work. God does everything the Bible says well. And the work of grace and salvation is something that we cannot do. We cannot save ourselves. There's no way in the world. We cannot buy our own salvation. There's not enough money printed. Can't buy salvation at Walmart or go on Amazon and, oh, I'm going to add this to my cart. God's salvation. I'm going to add that to my cart. Can't do it. We cannot save ourselves. Only God can. We cannot breathe life into ourselves. We cannot raise ourselves up in resurrection the bible says the bible says you hath he quickened you who were dead in trespasses and in sins in ephesians chapter 2 and in verse number one you hath he quickened god has made us alive in christ the work that got started his work not ours our responsibility is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we'll be saved. 
Our responsibility is to believe in him who sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary for our sins. This work that God has begun in us will not be complete in this life. It's a lifelong work that God is working in us and actually through us. As long as we live in an imperfect world and we live in this imperfect, what the Bible describes in Philippians chapter 3, vile body, God's work of grace will not be done. And as long as we live in this imperfect world and in this imperfect body, there's more work to do. Our being conformed to the image of Christ is a daily work. And after salvation, that's part of that work of grace that God does in our life. That work of sanctification. It's that $9 theological word that means being set apart. And daily the Lord sets us apart from the world to himself. But we have to be able to choose if we're going to follow or not. But God's begun the work to transform us into the image of God's Son, Jesus Christ. It's a daily work. It's a work that only God can perform. It's a tough and difficult work two steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, four steps back. It's a difficult work because we tend to get in the way of God. That's why it's a difficult work, at least for him. But I have a God that majors in the impossible, so he can change my life. All I have to do is let him. This is a good work that God does which God does for us, and it does us the greatest good. When we let God perform his grace in our life, there is nothing better in this world than that. The work that God has begun is a work that he will finish. God has never started something that he didn't finish. When he went to be able to deliver his people, the nation of Israel, out of slavery in Egypt, he didn't finish that work until the Egyptian army was drowned in the Red Sea. And Egypt still hasn't been a world power from that day to this. When God starts a work, God finishes that work. That work of salvation that we have is that free gift. God began that work. And when Christ rose again from the grave and ascended back up into heaven, that work was finished. So we can be confident that God finishes what he started. Christ started the church. He said in Matthew chapter 16 and in verse 18, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And from that day to this day, The Lord has always had a church. 
a remnant that has not compromised, that has preached and taught the word of God, that has brought salvation to men and women and boys and girls, Even though our numbers may not be as great as they used to be. God will always have a people. Until the day he comes to take us home to be with him. We need to make sure that we're a part of that people. Not compromising. Not giving up. Not becoming a social club. Continuing the working the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Letting the Lord work in our heart and life with his grace and through us that others may see Christ in us. That good work. And if God started this work of grace and didn't finish it, it would be a work that would remain unfinished. Imagine, if you will, in God's plan of salvation before the foundation of the world. If God had started that work and somewhere along the line had said, no, these people are so terrible I can't finish it. Where would we be? We'd be in hell. We'd be condemned. We'd be hopeless and helpless. With only this world as our life. You know, imagine that. Man, it's so disappointing. And it gets more disappointing as the years go by. <laughs> it really does. With everything that is going on. Drugs in the White House. Ah, I tell you. So God must perform. He must finish what he has started. And we can... Be fully persuaded and have confidence that God won't abandon what he has begun. God has a history and a record and a resume of seeing things through to the end. And even as we read the, revelation, the prophecy of the revelation of the New Testament, God sees things through. To the end. He has promised that the wicked will be punished. That will happen in the days of the book of the Revelation. The condemned will be put into the lake of fire and brimstone to burn forever and ever and ever. God will finish that. His children will stand before that judgment seat of Christ to be able to receive the rewards of the things that they have done in their bodies, whether it be good or bad. God will finish that. God will bring us here to rule and reign with him. He'll make this place all new. And we'll be able to live with him for eternity. Because God finishes, he performs, he completes what he starts. And we can have the confidence of the promises of the word of God. He will never leave us. Nor will he forsake us. God will crown and finish the work that he has started. Because God does all things well. 
This work of grace that God has begun will be finished when Jesus comes for us. When that trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. There are too many, there are too many believers I believe that want to live their life until death. But I have news. Death may not come to every person that's in this room. Because the Lord could come at any moment. And those which are alive and remain will not go through the valley of the shadow of death. They will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. So how should we live our life as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ? Not unto death. But we should live our life in great anticipation that the Lord is coming for us soon. And live every day like it's the last. And if we can do that, it would be amazing what God could do in us and through us. If we surrendered ourselves to the Lord every day like it would be our last. It would be wonderful. And when the Lord comes, take his children home and judge the world. That is when our salvation the process of sanctification and glorification will be complete. There in verse number nine, Paul said that he prayed for the Philippian church. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment or discernment word that could be used there that ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ God has begun this good work of grace in us who are saved. And he continues to begin the work of grace to everyone who gives their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. This work will be finished by God. And if we are cooperative and obedient to God, and God will finish his work whether we are cooperative or obedient. <laughs> then we can finish our life and our race strong for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can say with the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter, two, chapter 4 and verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And when the Apostle Paul went home to be with the Lord, I'm sure the Lord was there to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And if we wish the Lord to say that about our life, let us let God work <laughs> His work of grace within our life. Let's not rebel and say no and are you kidding, are you crazy? Let God work. 
and it'll be amazed what God can do in and through you. I appreciate your time and attention tonight.